Hello everyone, Hermano here. Welcome again to the channel. So in the coming days and weeks, besides doing some more Arch Linux installations, I'm going also to cover a little bit more about the maintenance of the system. And in this video, I'm going to focus on backup. There are several options how to backup your Arch Linux system. And today I'm going to explore one of the easiest one. So there's a program called rsync, which is used in Linux generally to backup data, whether locally on an external drive or via SSH on an external server. And rsync is basically a backup tool from the command line. So you basically type in the commands to backup your data. However, today I'm going to look on something which builds on top of rsync, which is called grsync which is basically a graphical user interface for rsync, just to make things a little bit more simple for today. In later videos, I'm going to also cover rsync from the command line and also how to backup your data via SSH on an external server. But for today, we are just going to focus on grsync, which is a simple tool to backup your Arch Linux data. So before beginning the backup, we need to actually have a destination where we want to backup onto. So I have here with me a USB stick, and there is one thing we need to consider when we back up on an external drive or a USB stick, like in my case, and that's the file system. Generally speaking, you can back up your data on a FAT file system. I had no problems whatsoever, also saving photos and documents and other data on that. But if, for example, you want to back up an entire directory, like for example, your home directory or your root directory, you basically the whole system, then it's better to back up on an external drive with a Linux file system, for example, ext4. And that's to make sure that things like permissions, groups, and so on are preserved when you back up your data. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. So let me plug in first my USB stick. There you go. So I am in GNOME now and I have a utility installed here called disks that I can use to format my USB stick. If you are in KDE or in another desktop environment, you will have probably another utility. If you don't, you can also install disks, the same utility I'm using here in GNOME. So let me pull this up. And as you can see here, I have two disks. One is my internal disk. This is the 500 gigabytes SSD I have in my laptop. And I have also my 16 gigabytes thumb drive here, which I will click and it's formatted as a FAT partition. So I want to change this to the Linux file system ext4. To do this, I'm just going to click here on the gear button and click on format partition. And I can choose a name, so I'll name it backup. And I don't need to erase here anything. It's just going to overwrite existing data and takes longer. I don't need to do this. But here I can choose the file type I want to format the USB stick with. So as you can see right now, it's FAT selected. But I'm going to choose internal disk for use with Linux systems only, ext4. So I'm going to click here. I don't need to pass for protect. And click next. And then click format. It's going to take a moment to format the partition. And there you go. We have now a 16 gigabyte ext4 file type. So we can close up this window. Now we can install grsync by pulling up the terminal. And let me go here full screen and increase the font size so that you can see better. And we'll type in sudo pacman dash s grsync, very simply. And hit enter. Enter the password. Now we have two packages that are going to be installed. One is grsync, of course, which is the user interface for the other package, which is rsync. We need to install, of course, both, otherwise grsync will not work. So let's accept the defaults by hitting enter. And that's pretty quick. So I can close up this window here. And now I can pull up grsync by typing in here grsync. And we have here our grsync window. So let's explore a little bit this window here. We have several things we can look at. So on the top here, we have our profile bar where you can basically decide what profile you want to use with grsync. As you can see, there is a default profile and there is also a photos profile, which I created already before, but you can create as many as you like. And each profile will have its own settings. So for example, if you're backing up photos, you'll have already here your source and destination, your settings already checked off, and you can just begin backing up. If you have other profiles here installed, like for example, the default backup here could be something else. For example, backing up your documents, you will have also your setting already saved there. We have now on the right of the profile bar a plus where we can create a new profile here. I don't need to do this now. And then we have also here another button for deleting the current session. We have here an info button, which is the so-called dry run. So this basically will perform the backup without actually writing anything. This can be very useful if you're backing up a lot of things and you want to make sure that there are no errors in the backup. And then the last button here is really to run the full backup. And this one will write data on the disk. 
Moving down, we have here three tabs. You have basic options, advanced options, and extra options. So I'll go to the basic options here first. We have two simple fields here, source and destination. We'll fill them up here a little bit later. And then we have some options here. So the nice thing in GR Sync is that if you hover with your mouse on these options here, you'll see a small description. For example, preserve time here will preserve modification times on the file. We have preserve permissions which is going to preserve the permissions on the file. This is one of the options which will not be backed up if you choose to back up on a FAT file system. We have also preserve owner, which is going to preserve, of course, the owner of the file. And as you can see, this is only for the super user. This also will not be backed up if you back up on a FAT file system. And we also preserve group, which is going to preserve, as the description says, the group. And this is also not going to be preserved if you back up on a FAT file system. So you have to keep in mind these few options here. And we have delete on destination. This basically mean that if there are files on the destination which are not present in the source, they are going to be deleted. I normally don't check this because it can happen that by accident I put there one file which is not intended to be there, but I don't want it to be deleted because I want to be able to move it if I need to. We have verbose mode. This I will leave it checked on. This is just going to show you more information when the backup is performed. We have ignore existing. This basically means that if there are some files in the source which are also already in the destination, they will be skipped during the backup. This might be useful, for example, if you want to do an incremental backup. Skip newer. This means if you have newer files in the destination compared to the source, they will not be updated. Windows compatibility will make sure that some options, for example, the modification time comparisons will be kept. It's a kind of a workaround for the Windows FAT file system limitations, as the description says. I normally don't use this. And size only, this basically checks the size of the file instead of the time and the checksum. So I don't use this normally because I want to be sure that I have my files backed up based on a the time they were created and not on the size. Show transfer progress, this is self-explanatory. And do not leave the file system. This basically means that the backup will stay into the file system boundaries and it will keep everything in check in the ext4 file system, basically. So we have also some advanced options here, which I'm not going to go through right now. But again, if you hover on them, you'll see what they do. They are fairly self-explanatory. And in the extra options here, we have one which I use very often, which is the run as super user. This can be useful, especially if you back up the whole system. So the root partition, basically, because then you have to have the super user privilege to do that. And GRSync will also ask for your password. And then you can also back up the whole root directory. So basically the whole system. So I'm going to let this checked off. And let's go back to the basic options here. And now I want to perform a backup. So I click on the source here and select open. And let's say that I want to back up here my whole home directory. So I'm just going to click home here, which is already selected and click open. And now I go to the destination here and select open. And I'm going to choose my backup stick here. And there's nothing in there right now. So I'll just click open. And first I want to try the dry run to see if there are any errors coming up. So I'll click on the info button here. And as you can see, because I selected the super user option, I'm asked for my password. And there you go, completed successfully. There were no errors reported. So that means if I perform the backup, everything is going to be correct. So I click close here and now I can perform the backup and click this button here, make a full run. And again, I'll type in my password and hit authenticate. It's going to take a moment here to make the backup. And there you go. It's completed successfully. Now let's have a look at my USB stick here. So I'll go to the file manager and I'll click the backup USB stick here. And you can see there is a backup here. If I double click on it, I am asked for my password because I did this as a super user. So I put up my password here and hit enter. And as you can see, my whole home directory is there. Now I don't have much in here, but what I do know is that I have some photos in my downloads folder. So let's check if they are there. And indeed they are all four there. So the backup worked correctly. So just to show you how the profile works, let me close up this window here and I'll choose the photos profile for source and destination here. I'll select just the pictures folder and click open. And for the destination here, I'll choose my USB stick here and I don't want to back up in my existing backup here. So I'll just select the stick and create another one and click open. So now I click the make a full run and it's completed successfully. So I don't have actually anything in there, but I just want to make sure that the folder was backed up. So I click 
let me center this window here and I click the backup USB stick and you can see the pictures folder is there and there's nothing inside which is fine but it was backed up correctly so the nice thing here with profiles again if I go back to the default profile my other directory is there and the options are also there and if I go to photos you can see it saves the options I selected before so this is about GR sync you can play with it it's a very simple program to use and in the next videos, as I said, I will also explore rsync from the command line and also rsync via SSH if you want to backup on an external network on a server. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, make sure you like it by clicking the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of future videos. And if there is anything specific you want me to cover or you have any question, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you in the next one. <music>